dive into actually um, how this can treat mental illness. What exactly are psychogenics? When someone hears that, a big question mark goes over the head. Right, it's basically evaluating or studying the genes that contribute to psychiatric disease. Mm. Um, and so this can be anything from schizophrenia to depression to anxiety to obsessive compulsive disorder, which we see a lot of in dermatology because of people that have um, BDD or body dysmorphic disorder. About 13% of the population that we treat as dermatologists have BDD. So it's basically the genetics behind those psychological conditions. What's so interesting is we're looking at and talking about mental health so much more I feel like in the last couple of years. Yes. Let's talk about what what this looks like as far as new treatments for mental health disorders. What's it looking like right now? Yeah so the, the thing that with mental health and, the, and I, we're finally talking more about it is because there's usually an 11 year lapse between the time that you start to exhibit the symptoms mm. and the time that you get diagnosed and treated mm. because there's so much stigma around it which is why I really wanted to cover this today um, and so Historically, with schizophrenia, which is a condition that affects many of, especially our homeless population, 21% of our homeless population generally has some type of mental health disorder, generally schizophrenia, has only been historically treated with drugs that target the dopamine receptor in the brain. For the last 60 years, there's been really no innovation. Mm. And so for the first time, psychogenics, a combination of looking at the genes in these psychologic diseases, are working with um, now AI technology, the smart cube, where essentially there's this box that combines vision, um, combines, it has like a reference of all the drugs that possibly exist, and they look at the behaviors of mice that are under the effect of drugs, and try to, and they try to induce schizophrenic-like symptoms to try to determine and elucidate um, what are the patterns that can be addressed using all the information it has on the drugs that are presently available and all the information that it has on the behaviors that you could potentially modify from a gene standpoint. And so it's combining robotics with like visual therapy uh, and basically monitoring these mice. And from there, it's able to create a signature drug. And that's how this drug... Tailor-made to that person's disorder? Tailor-made to the combination of the behavior that this drug, that these, that these mice that are showing effects of schizophrenia have, and cross-reference into the drugs that already exist in the population. So AI is actually in the study portion of it, but is it in part of the treatment portion? No, so then it basically tells you this is a receptor that you might want to consider mm. targeting. So instead of the dopamine receptor that we've been targeting for 60 years, that really one in three people that have schizophrenia don't respond to, now, if you could potentially target a different receptor, then you might be able to affect a greater population and have a better effect. Because presently with schizophrenia, you can only really treat the psychotic symptoms of the disorder uh, and the delusions which can be limiting, but you don't treat the apathy portion, the withdrawal portion. Um, and so now this drug, the intention is that you might be able to not only treat the positive symptoms, but the negative ones as well. It's fascinating. Yeah, and it's interesting that we talk about how AI is going to change the world and is changing the world so fast right now. And this is, we're talking about one area of medicine yes. here, right? How is AI going to change being a doctor in any capacity going forward? Well, in this particular case, it would have taken at least five years to really test out all 2,500 compounds that this technology was able to distill down to 300 compounds in less than three years. Mm -hmm. So it's going to buy us a lot of time, save us a lot of time to treat conditions that we, you know, usually take a lot more time to get to the root cause of. Mm -hmm. um, we still have to do clinical trials, which still relies on treating humans. So now this drug is under phase three clinical trials. So at the very end, potentially, once the that is out at the end of this year could be available by the end of 2024. So it has basically bought us almost three to four years of time that it would have taken if we had to individually study each compound. Just fascinating. And, really and this is the beginning. Yeah, yeah, right. And we're hearing so many dangers of AI. Perhaps this will be a positive influence. So Dr. Sabrina Fabi, always great to see you. And thank you for breaking such a complicated thing down for us civilians. Yes, <laughs> my pleasure. Always trying to give people hope thank with you. the possibilities. Thank you.